Oh yeah, this is what you can do if you must do it. And it's because we have to have an energy saving and we have got the Kyoto protocol to have less carbon dioxide implant. So, well, what we can do with the house is without making it worse and not changing the aesthetic value of the house, there's a little trip to go. Heat will rise up when it's getting warm. And that means that if it's more than one level of house, it will raise up to the roof sooner or later. And that's where we could stop it. So then we will keep it inside the house and we start to try to get out through the windows or through the walls instead. But we've been talking a lot about insulation. I want to look outside the box. What you can do to just not look on wall, a window, look at a whole house, look at the energy. Where can we get energy which is cheaper? Uh, because old houses must leak to dry out. So we must do it. And a lot of damage is started when people started not to have oil burner in the house in Sweden and that did some were fine with wood. The chimney was very hot and it would suck the, uh, it was a ventilation through the chimney. It would, it would evacuate the ventilation and it would suck the air through the windows. If they took the ventilation in the wall, it would also be a quite healthy house. And it will also be beaming and leading a hot uh, ray warmth to the, underneath the floor, on the floor level, and it will dry out there. And on the ceiling, the chimney will also have a little bit different of the temperature, which make it in balance. So such an alternative, which is by wood, it's a granulate and a special burner, and solar energy is uh, there's how much energy as, as we need in the sun. And it's quite, people say it's very expensive, but to pay about 8,000 euro to isolate a house saving 80 euro, uh, but if you invest in Sweden, uh, 50,000 euro, you will have 10,000 kilowatt in solar energy, electricity. And if that is put into a heat pump, you will have 30,000, 35,000 kilowatt hour in heating because a heat pump do that trick, it's hocus pocus. Well, I can't tell you how it works, but I, I know how it works, but I haven't got the time. Uh, yeah, back to houses. House could look like this, one floorage, and the attic up here is not used more for storage. This is one of the older type of Swedish house. It could look like this in Sweden. Uh, people start to get a little richer, big, uh, build a big, bigger houses, and it could look like one of the most famous houses which people buy in Sweden, and they renovate or they keep it, uh, preserve it and do everything just like the yellow one I showed in the beginning is the same sort of type house. They're usually placed in the coastline of Sweden with a view over the sea, so they're very popular. Hot air would raise up as I told you and it would try to like a balloon, you know the balloon raising up with hot air burner, it would, it would raise but the house is so heavy so it would not raise up but you try to squeeze out through all of the construction. And if there's a little hole leaky somewhere, it will actually blow through that hole. First house, you remember the first one? It looked like this. Living area and a beam on both sides. And then all the, uh, all the roof is on top of that. The second one looks a little bit similar but suddenly we start to have same thickness of the lumber all the way up, but it's a little bit higher here. So we start to have this as a living area. You have another type of roof and you've got the beaming square. And the third one is just the beaming missing. And this one is thinner because the industry started to come and you could use the saw industry and you could make smaller planks and you can use well, you know, they could earn more money. First house again, looks like this. On, we are now looking, stand up on the attic up here. Inside here, we're standing looking. And as you see, it's sawdust. It's just plain sawdust. And this is what look, a little house. This insulation material is very good is hygroscopic. If there's some 
water entering to the construction. It will suck it on a big area and it will dry out. And it has to be the same uh, humidity in, in the material before uh, everyone has to be as wet as the neighbor of the sawdust. So it will take long time to be uh, so much water in the construction that the mold can start to grow. A little bit further away, and uh, the plank here. And since I'm going to tell you about two construction, the first one is what you can do in this area if you're not going to use it as a living area. If it's a little bit higher and you're going to use living area, we are going to do something in these areas. And as I told before, you see these white ones, you see the white one here. Well, you can never, never insulate on that sort of uh, mold. It has to be a fungicide treatment before you do anything. Because when you change the temperature, I put isolation on here, it will be very cold on that wood plank. And it will be very humid because when the, the tree is in cold outside, it would take more water into the wood because when it's low temperature outside, there's much higher humidity in it. I can't tell you all about that, but we go back here. You look in here in this area between the beams underneath. The producers of insulation material, they will say, do insulate your house, and you will say, a lot of money. They do never tell you what would happen and how good the original construction is. So I'm going to do it because I calculated on it. And this is how you calculate how much leakage you have on a construction. You have, the most important thing is that you have this lumber. And then you have all the wood and all that. But I haven't got the time to go through it. And uh, this is same layer again, just to be quite sure about it. So now I'm telling you, if you look on the sawdust up there, 20 centimeters, usually it's 15. But I have to calculate on centi 20 centimeters because the industry, the producers usually have 20 centimeters. Otherwise, my numbers would not be comparable. So that house you just saw, if it had been 100 square meters, which is the calculation, a house with 100 square meters, and that level up here is 100 square meters. It, it is in Sweden, in Gothenburg, the house, and it is climate zone to, to, uh, <coughs> 2. You have the leakage of 4,600 kilowatt hour a year. That is the losses. If you take the same, if you take away the sawdust, dig out the sawdust, and you put in something we call ship sawdust. In Swedish, it's kuttersporn, this material. And it has to be in a special way of sheep sawdust and sawdust to have the lumber 044, 0044. And that's very good uh, value for it. And it was tried in the Swedish uh, testing institute, Råd and Rön. That's where the numbers are from. And uh, I send around it, and you can try it. And it has to be very dry. And if you're using that sheep, sheep sawdust, it should be from one industry who has very, very dry wood. Because if you take it from the, who make planks and that, it will be wet and you will have mold in it. So it's, it's not so simple. It has to be a very dry product. Between six and eight uh, volume water each square meet, uh, cubic meter. That's the number it should be. Okay, so if you do that, cutter. It's called cutter. You will have a leakage of 3,000. You will now save more than 1,600 kilowatt an hour just to change it to some material which is very cheap. If what the industry doesn't tell you, if you took uh, dig out the sawdust and you put one of the modern products, glass wool fiber or stone wool fiber, and that is the third number, minol, 20 centimeters, the losses will be 2,800. There's never any who produce something who will give you the numbers. What? How good is the original? What I do give you is the number, do this action in the house, and you will save this much. So now you know the number from the start, and you know how to do. So if you want to save more energy, this is the original layer. You could put another layer on top. And you need to have a ceiling break on the, this is where we live, this is the living area. You need to have a ceiling break here to, for humidity to stop 
humidity go up. So we go back to the sun. So if we leave the sawdust, which we can do if there had been no mouse in it and if there's no insects or anything, we can leave the sawdust. Otherwise, we have to take it away. If you have the sawdust 20 centimeters and you put on 25 centimeters, the leakage would be 1,900. So now you say more than 2,700 kilowatt an hour a year. And if I told you about the window, so if you change the window of the facade, you will invest more than 10,000 euro, and we say about 180 to 150 euro. Here you save much more without any hard investment, and we not change the house. If you change the sawdust and put in cutter and have another cutter 20 centimeter, the leakage will be 1,800. If you have a modern product, mineral glass wool, 20 centimeters, and notice there's just 15 here. Why I have made a little, little trick, because the question here was, how much of the old insulation do I need to have to compare to be in the level of 1800, which the modern material say that you can have? So the industry does not tell you the lie. They just tell you, do this action, and the house will leak 1800, and you will save 3,000 kronen a year, because one kilowatt in Sweden will cost you one kronen. So that's what they're telling you. They're not telling you how the start was. So I have made this just to see how close can you come to this level and how much you should have. And now this difficult part. I'm telling you one thing, telling you the numbers, and then suddenly I have to tell you another thing. You must never, never put on 25 centimeters, that one. Because the total area, you must never put on more than totally 20, 35 centimeters. It will be too cold up here. If you put, as I have done here, 45, you will have problem. This is just a calculation, and the calculation is just to show the number to come in level with the industry, the producers, what they tell you. So remember, never more than 35 centimeters if you do the action. And this is what it could look like when you've done it. This is a bit more than modern construction, and there is one thing here which is necessary for the ventilation. And then uh, this again. Don't forget e ventilation. Oh, <laughs> you smile. Good. You understood it. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you do an action of isolation, you have to do a ventilation. And in this area up here, it has to be a decrease. Not, not, uh, you have to be less ventilation. Okay. Less insulation. And why? Well, there was a test done in SP, a test institute in Sweden, and it showed that old houses did actually who had no ventilation in the attic were about this line, about just below 80% in the humidity in the air, and it was raising down to 60. Those who had a lot of ventilation did actually go from 90 down to the low. And when you got a big shift, you got humid come in and you got condensation. And this is a big problem in Sweden, and we're trying to solute it, so have a solution for it, but yeah, we're not there yet. We've got some technical uh, instrument, we've got pumps and a lot of things, but in uh, a lot of houses, that is a problem today because we insulate it too much. And uh, once you've done too much, you have to do a technical solution. And that's why I'm telling you, do not take more than 35 centimeters because you will have the same problem as we have in Sweden. And it will cost you more money because you have to have another technical equipment to solve the problem. I send this one around as well. And if somebody would like it, it's in Sweden, it's Swedish, you can try to take Google uh, Translate. Otherwise, maybe the institute have one in English on the website. Yeah, back to the second one you can do. This is the first house, you recognize the beam, and this is what the wood looked like. And remember what I told you about the fungicide. If there is fungicide, you have to look with a little tiny uh, microscope to see if there is any. If there is fungicide, you have to make a treatment about it. So what can you do? This is what you can do. This is the wood plank I showed you. This is a little board, Masonite is called in Sweden. It actually, it's, it's a sawdust pressed to a, to a board with uh, a special procedure. This is a hygroscopic material isolation and it should actually, the best part and you all, what you always should use is the one you blow in because you've got a good, good um, performance because there wouldn't be no gaps in it, gaps in it. And I'm going to show you that one as well. You 
can send that one around us. It is cellulose fiber. And for, for the fire, it, this is new cellulose fiber from the paper industry. And it is chopping up the wood, boiling the sulfate, and you get this product. And then it's going further over to be papered. You have to go, but they stop, they take that part in that process. So it's new material, there's no mold in it, and it's ammonium polyphosphate for uh, the fire in it. And that means that you have to uh, use in Sweden to get the fire, uh, the fire uh, to stop fire. And there's a lot of discussion about that material. But this is what is shown. Okay. Uh, on the inside, you have to have a humility break to stop hot air to go into construction. It should not be completely open. And not a barrier. The barrier is in plastic. The one we use is either in paper, the paper one, and there's one in polyester. And then on the inside. So what you do is that you actually have fungicide treatment on there. You put the board, you put this barrier here, and then the entrepreneur arrives, put in a pipe, and he blows in this material all the way up. Quite cheap cost on a house, as I told you, about 100 square meters would be about 11, 12,000 kroner, 11 to 1,200 euro. Well, this is a drawing, what should be done. Don't forget about this ventilation chamber. It's important. Better be safe than sorry. Sometimes you can be without it, but uh, in the 1990s they said, don't, you don't need it. And four years later, there was a test which uh, stipulated that it was very humid in the construction. They did not know why it was no mold. So after that, we actually want to have safety. Second house, you remember it? A little bigger, the addict up there. Could look like this. And um, the way to do it, it, this one, this is the second house. So actually, we have one construction here, and on this one, we will have the one I first told you about on the little house. And you need to have this humility break where the red is. The humility break has to go without any uh, borders. It has to go in, in one piece. And when you have to make another, when it's not enough, you have to pass it over and it has to be nailed together so it won't leak. As I told you about the balloon, if there's a hole anywhere, it would just be an organ. It would be a hurricane into it, and all the air would go wrong, the wrong way. And up here, we got from the first example from the little house. It's the same method. And on the side, again, it's exactly, exactly the same. Exactly the same. Don't forget the ventilation in, uh, that it should be air circulating. This is outside, this is inside. And the third house is similar, it's just much easier because uh, it's new construction, it's straight lines, so actually it's just the same. And this one. So what happens if you have the right craftsman, you have the right knowledge, or you think they have? Well, this, per, this was, you remember the house, it's like this. And this is the reality. So then, this is a typical house in Sweden. And um, looked like that, as you know before. And everything was done like the book I told you about. And the problem is that I'm on the guidance in the Gothenburg area and Vestra Jutland's region. And this person phoned me just before my holiday. And people are allowed to come and have the guidance, and there's no charge at all. And they will uh, sit down and sh they show pictures of the houses and I will tell them uh, advice how to do it and what to do and who sh they should contract for it. I had uh, the time I had, he could not take, so I did a shortcut. And never take a shortcut because that would be terrible. And it became actually terrible because I told him from the beginning, I cannot tell you about your house, I could just tell you in general, as I told you today, all these uh, techniques and everything. But I could not tell him about the fungicide. I could not tell him about how fungicide looks. And he did not tell me. So this is the communication. I think he understands and he thinks I should know everything about houses, but I don't know his house. 
So he had the right contractor, and uh, they had a lack of knowledge. They did not know about the mold. Look here. And this is what it looked like when it had been insulated. And this is just a spiral nap, but this one up here. And this. And this is within six months. Usually it takes 15 years to become like this, if the construction is wrong. Six months. But if you look close, this one is not infected. And this is old planks, recycled planks. And that is the problem by using recycled planks. There could be a fungicide in it. And once the temperature is right, the humidity is right, and the oxygen is there, and the nutrition is there, wow, it just starts. So, look at it. And this is another one. Sometimes the nades go through from the outside, and it rusts and it drips. So everything was done with the right material, hygroscopic material, which can absorb water and everything. But if it's just for two minus small details missing in the Croftman, the result will be this. What he didn't tell me was that in this house there had been mineral isolation. Underneath this new cellulose fiber, there is mineral isolation. And they have had this ventilation, as I showed you before, between this insulation and the roof to ventilate. And this is old damage from that insulation time. And that's why it's black, because it's been taking this about 15 years before it became like that, and then suddenly the temperature changed because we isolate on the top, we put another layer on, and it becomes very cold up here, and there's leaking up hot air, and then suddenly the humidity is there, and it starts to, to grow. If this owner hadn't, luckily, he came up here, but usually you do the insulation, and when you've done it, you leave it, and you maybe come up and maintain some 15, 20 years later, uh, there would be nothing left up there. It would be a huge, terrible uh, sacral, uh, circular lacrimon on it. And this is the ventilation chamber, as I talked about. Don't forget about it. It's very important. And this is the second thing. Since the temperature up here becomes very cold, one glass frame window is here. There should be produced another one inside because it would make it very cold. So that's the second fault. The third one is that this is a house with two stories, and the staircase is going down to the bottom level, and just straight up here is the second floor. It's very easy for the hot air to come up into the construction. And more mistakes. This is the paper, and um, it has not been sealed. It should be nailed with a wood, a little bit piece of wood turned around and nailed so it won't be like that. It would just let it through. And with the chimney, there's another construction should be done as well, so it's not been done the right way because it's fireplace and the paper and fire in Sweden is okay with paper there because we got inspection every second year on the chimney. But in your country, you should never leave a paper close to the chimney. So there has to be another construction there. And this is the beams I've shown you on the roof all the time. It's not sealed there either. It's just let the air in. And uh, those damages would have taken a long time to happen to make the humidity. But the worst one was this. This is the maintenance uh, hole to get up to the attic. They just put the insulation on top of it. It could be insulation in a desk. It could be lin uh, linen. It could be... Hemp could be medical construction. This is another it's an insulation, which I do not recommend because there's a 16% polyester in it. To make the, this construction, you have to uh, melt glue with, uh, with, uh, with um, cellulose fiber. So there's a lot of plastic in it. That's why I told you to use, use the one I showed you first to blow it in. And this is the hatch, and there's no, there's no ceiling on it. There should be, and what you like, natural material, it has to be a silicon. Don't use one of these in hemp because it wouldn't seal it. You have to use it, whether you like it or not. It's the one way to be sure. So how did we do it? Well, this is a Danish company. This is a uh, fungicide to kill 
nearly anything you want to kill. And it's not dangerous for human, it's classified 00, Dutch 01 in the chemical inspection, and that is uh, just similar to what you have in indoors paint. But it's uh, killing the fungus eats. This one, uh, since it's last lecture, if anyone would like to have it, you can just keep it. There's lovely pictures of fungus eats which will be killed and how to kill them. And it's in Danish, but you know Google Translate. So it's a very good book to see what sort of fungus eat it is you have in your house. So we did it after one, uh, and it should just be sprayed or with a, uh, with a brush, apple aside. Well, it's killed. It should be done the first before we start to insulate. It would be much, much easier. And it should be one, done one small time. Also that material, the, the product that I told you about, it uh, could be used on brick walls and wood. It, it's, a, it's the only material which can kill the um, serpent lacrimon in, um, in, uh, in stone walls. Otherwise you have to heat it up to kill it. So the second was we took, look, what was the house? This is the staircase, this is the room, and then we decided where to put the ventilation. So we put ventilation in every room, one of those to evacuate the air, which is a high pressure on the second floor. So this, don't forget about ventilation, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then again, what should you do? Look into a heating system, what can be done? In, I don't know how it is in uh, Estonia, in Sweden, we had an oil burner. Uh, this is a boiler, the green one is an oil burner. And in uh, 1990, there was um, this um, granulite burner of wood. When you burn wood, you will not contribute to the implant, imp uh, footprint of coal dioxide. Uh, because the tree, when it grows, it will absorb coal dioxide, and um, carbon dioxide is in the carbon dioxide, and uh, when you burn it, it will give back what it has absorbed. So this is a good one to use according to Kyoto Protocol. Uh, and it burns with a high temperature, so there will be no uh, gases of, uh, well, chem chemical number N. I don't know the English word for it. Uh, this is the granulate, and a close picture on that. And the price for that in Sweden is uh, 45 a year. Uh, well, uh, one, 4.5 cent each kilowatt. And it will keep the house healthy because it will leak uh, energy into the chimney and keep the chimney hot. And the chimney in old house is actually the heart to keep the ventilation going and keeping the house healthy on the attic and on the ground. So it's very good to have a burning system in our old house, which they were built to be. This, this is a book. Unfortunately, it's in Swedish, and it's about, it's about electricity, how to think about electricity, and that we have a, a grid of electricity. And in Sweden, the biggest thing now is um, solar energy, because if you have solar energy, as I told you before, and you invest about 15,000 euro, uh, the solar energy panels could produce 10,000 kilowatt a year. And that is the one I want you to use in a heating pump and get the 35,000 kilowatts. And you don't bother about insulation the walls, you don't bother about changing the windows, and the house could be allowed to leak. And the price for this system would be less than all the insulation actions that you might would do, and all the windows changing actions. So think outside the box and use it. Uh, the idea is that uh, solar panels in, um, in our countries is actually working very fantastic because in the our summer, the temperature is so low, so they're operating at maximum. In the south, in Spain, where it's hot, the solar energy panels will not produce as much energy because they'll be overheated. So up here, it's very good. So in Sweden, the system is that you have actually a contribution from, from the government. You will have uh, six cents each kilowatt you produce it in uh, tax, uh, um, uh, back on a tax, and uh, you will have the certificate for a producer uh, of uh, green electricity. So that means that you actually get nearly one, uh, one krona for each kilowatt. And that means that you produce it in the summer when the sun is high and the many hours of sun, 
And then you've got enough money to buy the electricity in the winter when you need it. So you don't need this storage. You just need to have produce it. And we come quite far on this producer because the grid is that we can sell it to those who need it. And very soon we'll be connected to the European grid so we can produce and sell it to the Europeans. And that means that our water electricity could be saved during the summer. And during the winter we could let the water go on. So it has to be sold not on a little bit house. It has to be sold on a national level. Because if you sold it on that level and you make the, the effort to do it, it would be much better. And this is what I told you about. And this is inside the book. And, uh, but it shows actually that the sun is giving us 120,000 terawatt hour every second, and we're just using 16. So there's plenty of energy. So microproducers could be the answer for saving our houses and not making insulation on it. This is what it looked like. It's from the book, anyway. Uh, and that's what it looked like. And it would be awful to have on a house, which is uh, protected. But in Germany, uh, they're allowed to put it on the fields. And they have got all the farm fields with solar panels. So to say it doesn't have to be on the roof. It could be anywhere. So think outside the box, save the houses, save the energy problem, follow the carrier, the protocols, but think. Don't do as you're told, because sometimes the number you're told is not correct. This is an architect. He's one of the famous architects in Sweden. And this is uh, experience from 1970 up to date. And you're very lucky. It is in English. And on the page 118, he tells you about a ventilation system. This is called termite heating. And it doesn't use any electricity. It's just natural forces. So what do you do? Well, you do this. Outside here, you let the air in, into the ground. It has to be a big chamber because we have condensation here. Then you let the air through the pipe into the house where the blue goes up and it's let in. During the summertime, the hot air goes down and you put some special you know when you make more flour of a stone, it's called stone flour in Sweden, uh, you put that around the pipe because that will, that will keep the, that will accumulate the heat. So in the winter time when you put this minus degrees for this one, the air inside in north of Sweden, uh, where we have about 15 to 25 minus degrees, the air let into the house is eight degrees hot. So you don't have to heat the, the inside from minus 25, which you let in through a wall uh, ventilation, to 22. That's 40, more than 40 degrees you have to heat. You just have to heat the air from 8 to 22. And the less energy you have to do to produce heating the, the ventilation air, the less energy. So it's simple, and it works without anything. The only thing you have to do is that uh, there has to be a rope in this one. Because every year you have to put a tissue with the chloride to clean it. And once you take that one, you have another rope to lift next year. That's the only thing. That's the only maintenance for it. Those things, if you apply this termite heating, there's an architect in Sweden, um, oh, now I forgot the name, and um, well, it's used quite common. You can read more about it in that book.